So in this position, black has two pawns against your one pawn. And so it seems very dangerous, and it is, but it is drawable. So pause the video and take some time to figure out how white can go about drawing this position. So what white needs to do here is start by going king f1, keeping an eye on this pawn. And after king e3, king e1, f2, king f1, king f3, the important move that you had to find in this position is h3. And the idea is h4 is stalemate. And if they go king g3, then now we go h4. And after they take, we go king f2, and we make it back in time to h1. Now, of course, they don't have to go uh, for this variation, and instead they can continue shuffling their king around and maybe moving this pawn, and you have to continue with caution. But if you shuffle around these kind of four squares, you should be fine. White has an extra pawn, but it's not so clear how you continue and progress in this position. So pause the video and take some time to find the clearest and best way for white to convert this winning position. The move is f4. You're giving away a pawn, and after pawn takes, of course you don't take back, this would allow the king in, instead you go king f3. Now they have to take back, otherwise if they move their king, you're going to take on f4 with your king. So pawn takes, now you take back with the pawn, and the whole idea of this position is that now you're going to get opposition. And once you have opposition, you're going to be able to very smoothly take this pawn. Eventually, you can even take this pawn if you'd like and just convert and win. White can win this position, but it's not clear whatsoever how to do so. So pause the video and take some time to find the path that white should take in order to convert this position. You start by playing d5. And the purpose of going d5, well, if they take, obviously you go king d4, you're going to regain the material with interest because here you're also going to go ahead and win the c4 pawn very soon and from there the game so they're not going to take they're going to go c5 and here notice you can't push this king is within the square instead you wrap around now why did you do this well this is really cool you've basically sacrificed a pawn in order to drag this king over here where it can no longer enter and in the meantime get your king over here where it can enter and as you can see through opposition, you're going to slowly go ahead and win the pawns in the game. From this position, of course, it's a two versus one. White is better, but how do you make progress here? It's not as simple as it looks. So pause the video and take some time. Try to figure it out. If you were thinking king g5, well, the issue is after king g7, there's no good way to make progress. Pushing the pawn is actually going to be a draw and you can go back, but then we're just in the starting position again. What you have to do instead is wrap around unintuitively through g3 and then f3 and go to the side where now you have so much more space for your king now you can play g5 they move and now f5 and you're making progress again when your king has more space to be useful so after king t7 here you don't take this would actually allow black to draw you go uh, f6 check you continue with your king and here you can sacrifice the pawn and because of opposition you're going to be able to win. With the black pieces, the position does not look so good. This king is much more active than its counterpart, but black does have a pretty stunning way to draw the position. So pause the video and try to find the drawing mechanism black can use. So if you were thinking of going king c6 here, the issue with that is now white will play f4. And after f4, you're out of moves with your pawns, and so white will be able to slowly uh, attack with the king and get in front and of course this is just totally winning something like this is game over so going back you don't go king c6 you actually go f4 to stop f4 from white but also after they take both of these pawns are a bit weak and so what you'll see is that this exchange works much better for black where now black will be able to take both pawns and draw the really cool chess position with the white king being so active it's hard to imagine that black can draw this position but they can so pause the video and take a second to figure out how black can go ahead and draw the game the move is h4 and the idea with the move is pretty smart first of all if they were to take then white even risks losing after king f4 uh, if g4 is played then there is just made in two g5 is forced very beautiful and if g3 is played we take and we're still totally winning here 
because we're going to chip off this pawn and go and win the game from there. So they have to actually play very precisely, first going f4 check, still not taking, and now going f5, and only now can they take. Um, and so if white is precise, they can draw, but of course that's what we were looking for in this position with the white pieces, with the two pawns first of all being separated, and also with the king being much less active than his counterpart, it's hard to imagine that white can hold this position, uh, especially with this pawn being so weak, but they can. So pause the video and try to figure out how white can go ahead and hold. It's pretty beautiful. Let's go ahead and look at the solution. You start by going king to g2. And here, after king to e4, you go king g3. And after h5, this is the important moment. If you go h4, you allow the king to come in, and now you're losing the f4 pawn by force, and from there you're losing the game. Instead, you go h3. And the whole point is after the king now moves, of course, h4 doesn't help you, you're still going to lose. You go king h4. And if they take, it's stalemate. 